11 o'clock on the nose. Unfortunately, my Zoom just crashed, so I rejoined, and apparently I have not dropped off of the session yet, so apologize for that. Hopefully it realizes I'm gone here shortly, or if someone can kick out um, the old copy of me, that would be great. Um, but of course, today we'll be doing the functional group update for the build team, um, and uh, myself and Marm will be presenting, hopefully here soon. Um, I can't seem to take over, unfortunately. Um, but uh, what we can do is just get uh, perhaps started a little bit here. Um, so as far as agenda goes, uh, what we want to cover is highlights so far in Q4, right? So uh, what we've achieved and uh, what we hope folks are aware of and excited about across the company. Also some of the current challenges facing the team and how we're uh, dealing with them uh, and overcoming them. And then since we're kind of getting close to the end of 2017 here, uh, we want to talk a little about some of the big hairy goals or big ideas and focus areas that we have for 2018 um, that we want to try and you know, spend our time on and deliver the customers. Uh, and then we'll wrap up and t take some Q&A. So I unfortunately don't know how to get rid of this. Um, but the link to the presentation is in and I can't claim host. Um, all right, so um, the link to the presentation is in fact in the calendar invitation, and so you can follow along there. Um, and again, apologize for uh, this sort of uh, screen sharing snafu. And thank you, Yo, for um, linking it in the chat. Uh, Martin, do you wanna take it away here as far as the first set of our highlights? Great, thanks, Josh. Um, I think we need uh, an admin here to kick the old you out, but I don't see an admin at the moment. So uh, we'll have to do with what we can. <clears throat> oh, I see you're out. So uh, I guess you can give it a go again. Perfect. All right. Let me... Go ahead. Sorry. Take it away. Yes. Great. First of all, I wanted to uh, introduce Richard Clamp as a new team member. He joined in October, but uh, we um, didn't have a functional group update in October. Um, you might have met him during the summit, and uh, Richard has uh, already proven that he was, he's a great hire. He hit the ground running and uh, contributed a lot already to the team. So uh, um, a very warm welcome uh, to Richard. Um, as for the highlights, for the other highlights in uh, Q4, um, today we are releasing Tender 2, so happy release day everyone. Um, we, with Tender 2, we are finally making um, EGHA generally available, and um, I have to say that it's already running on GitLab.com for over a month, and uh, Knock on wood, we had no uh, problems uh, with it yet. A um, couple of things I wanted to note here is that uh, Ian Baum did a great job uh, building all of this. Um, you can check the documentation that is linked there. And um, if you take a look at the docs, I have to say um, some of you might ask, where is... Um, Josh, I'm going to mute you. If yeah, you thanks. Can. I can't mute while sharing myself, so. Okay. Well, that's a Zoom. First. Yeah, I can't. I can't mute, I can't mute you. So, right. I'm sorry. you'll have to be quiet. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, let, I'll mute myself here. Yep, cool. Um, if, if you take a look at the docs, as I was saying, uh, you might wonder, well, where is the simplification? Um, well, the simplification is there. If you start uh, going through the docs, you'll see that um, um, you can now set up uh, a cluster of, of seven machines um, that will uh, make your database highly available. But um, as always in this company, we are iterating. The main point, the main goal for us was to uh, have a full set of working documentation when making this uh, generally available. And our next steps are tied with um, the second item in the highlights uh, here, and that is getting the uh, configuration even simpler than that. 
If you take a look at the docs, you'll notice that there is a lot of repetition. There are a lot of things that uh, you need to copy paste. And uh, basically a lot of those things are not user uh, configuration or rather not configuration that user needs to think about. It just needs to happen, right? Because we are shipping the package that way. Um, with the roles change that is uh, scheduled for 10.3 with PGHA, this document is going to become much, much, much shorter. We already have this for our Redis HA and for GL, and it has proven to be much simpler and um, uh, hopefully with the feedback we receive from our customers, uh, we will make this uh, even, even simpler to set up. One other thing that uh, has been proven to be very problematic for us was deprecation. So whenever we introduce a configuration change or we need to remove something um, from the package, um, we have a very large tail behind us, which means um, customers and users do not upgrade that fast as we are shipping, which means that um, six months after we do a release, we get feedback sometimes that, hey, something is wrong or why did this break? And we have no idea anymore or rather it takes us a long time to figure it out. Um, we did some structure, structure changes inside of the package and now we are able to present deprecation warnings and um, we already managed to catch some um, interesting feedback from, uh, from our customers and uh, this has proven to be uh, or will prove to be a very useful thing um, in future for us. I think we can move to the challenges. Joshua, take it away. Thanks, Martin. So yeah, so um, thanks for that. And uh, super excited about all those features. Um, deprecation warning, as you mentioned, has already proven to be helpful. I think uh, it, it raised some potential, you know, upcoming deprecation in the Git host uh, service, for example, that were uh, sort of uh, going missed um, with sort of the, the current method of having it to warn you, but um, warn you kind of uh, uh, throughout the reconfigure process. And now with the summary edition at the end, um, it really kind of uh, helps to clarify and, and show um, what they need to be aware of here as far as you know, features that are, um, you know, uh, will be going away at some point in the future here. Um, so that's awesome. And again, uh, making GitLab easier to install is, is super exciting. Um, and, and other things that are exciting is that, you know, opportunity is everywhere for us. Um, GitLab is, you know, uh, getting increasing mind share uh, in, in the marketplace. Uh, the Forest Away report was awesome. And so um, we're just finding more and more folks who are wanting to partner with us and want to have uh, a GitLab and, you know, involved in, in some portion of, of their efforts in their own marketplaces. Um, and so what we're seeing is that um, definitely a lot of inbound requests. Um, Eleron has been very busy as far as distribution channels and uh, places to host GitLab, for example. Um, and, uh, you know, the challenge we have, of course, is that um, you know, we have to be uh, pretty selective in, in what we spend our time on. And again, I, I realize all of GitLab is like this, um, but um, in particular, you know, we're having to just to, to, to kind of hold off on some of these other opportunities um, uh, for a couple of reasons. One is, you know, just capacity. Um, and, and the great news is, is here that we're working hard to expand the team. We have a new hire starting in January who we are really excited about um, and bring some, some great uh, expertise. Uh, but also, uh, you know, currently in, in Q4 here, uh, a lot of our team resources are being directed towards a, a single effort, right? So over half the team uh, is in fact focused on delivering one thing. Um, and that thing is, in fact, I'm sure everyone's aware of it, the cloud native GitLab effort, right? So um, what this is, is aiming to embrace more cloud native practices. Uh, so uh, instead of having a single container or, you know, which has every single part of GitLab on it from Mattermost to Workhorse to Rails to Nginx, um, to instead offering a, a, a suite of containers which contain just a single portion of GitLab. Right, so we have a container, for example, Gitly, a container for uh, Unicorn and Rails. Um, and this has a number of benefits for improved scaling because you can individually scale each of these components um, and resilience. So if one has problems, it isn't sort of taking, uh, affecting a larger set of uh, functionality I and mean, it can be more easily and quickly replaced with sort of the new version um, or, a, or a sort of restarted pod, if you will. 
Um, so that's kind of a major effort um, and, and a good chunk of, of the effort here. And Marm will be going into more detail shortly on uh, sort of uh, where the effort is and, and what we've found so far uh, in this push. Um, the other thing we're doing is we're trying to reduce the reliance on shared storage. Uh, so right now, you know, with GitLab.com, and really for any customer wanting to run HA, uh, they have to have a shared storage service, something like an NFS. Um, and the care and feeding of that, um, uh, uh, you know, in, imposes a certain maintenance overhead um, and uh, a, a point of failure that, that we'd like to get rid of. Um, and so we want to try and reduce the reliance on that, have fewer pets, mainly NFS, um, and sort of improved uptime and improved also just maintenance and installation as well. Um, so a lot of great uh, benefits here. Um, and again, aligning with that cloud native kind of sort of uh, guiding star of GitLab um, and where we're going as a company. Uh, and we're aiming to have an early beta here by end of year. Um, and, you know, it's proving to be quite a challenge as, as we kind of document some of what we're finding now. Um, but again, still striving for that. Um, and we'll, of course, continue to focus on this for uh, uh, you know, a good amount of time after here as well to make sure it's all production ready and goes GA, of course, here. Um, as soon as possible. Um, with that, uh, pass it back off to Marin here to talk a little bit more about the kind of engineering effort and some of the challenges and surprises that we found. Thanks, Josh. Um, so yes, as uh, Joshua mentioned, half of our team or more than half of our team is uh, actually dedicated to uh, working on the, on the charts or cloud native um, GitLab. But I also have to say that uh, it's not only us, it's a, a very big engineering effort uh, here, and uh, it became even bigger when we tied the Helm charts to uh, GitLab.com GCP migration effort, which means our goal of migrating to um, GCP now became even wider, uh, but uh, more exciting actually, where we are going to um, deliver the charts that uh, our customers are going to use, but we are going to live test them at scale um, when we move to, uh, or during our migration to um, GCP. Um, one of the things I also wanted to mention is while this is an engineering wide effort, it is also now being proved that this is more than only engineering. It's proving to be a company wide effort. We now have uh, all of the product managers also involved uh, from the top all the way from CITSE uh, to, to everyone involved. Like we have uh, a very, very big um, involvement from ev everyone to get uh, everything that is needed for us to deliver or move a GitLab to the next uh, stage. Um, some of the challenges that we found, which are um, reducing our velocity basically um, are, I linked there, probably not really descriptive, but the components that su uh, definitely surprised, uh, surprised us was uh, GitLab Shell. Um, it is uh, just popping up everywhere. It's turned out to be uh, one component where uh, every piece of GitLab has uh, something to uh, do with. And um, untangling um, those dependencies there will take um, more effort from uh, various engineering sites, not only uh, production or uh, build team. Um, we also caught some uh, components mid-change. Um, for example, Gitaly was supposed to be one of the uh, easier things uh, for us to ship, but uh, with their move, with uh, Gitaly's team move um, to uh, uh, have part of their code base in uh, written in Go in their uh, Gitaly uh, uh, server, um, and part of it uh, still being in GitLab Rails means that uh, GitLab is now also popping up in a couple of places. They're doing an amazing job, um, but uh, this is definitely causing some, was causing some delays and will raise some of the urgencies um, um, when we come to them. And we also have a couple of unknowns. Uh, for example, we have no idea as of now, uh, how are we going to run a uh, database in Kubernetes? I don't think many people actually do know that uh, yet, but we are working um, on finding this out. We uh, luckily have consultants and uh, uh, for now database uh, we are considering as pet, which means for our GCP migration effort, um, database will be outside of the whole Helm uh, 
um, uh, chart delivery. Um, and as Joshua mentioned, storage is one of the other things that we want to um, get away from. Um, I'm not going to go forward with explaining what the GCP migration effort is. Uh, that is going to be presented by, um, most likely by production team. Um, so I'm going to move this over to Joshua again for our goals as a build team for 2018. Thanks, Martin. Um, so again, uh, you know, kind of that's going to take us through the end of the year here uh, as kind of, uh, again, uh, uh, a lot of our uh, focus and a lot of our efforts are, are going into that to make sure uh, we support the migration uh, as well as uh, trying to have a, a beta out that customers can, can try as well. Um, so, um, that's where we'll be spending a lot of our time here as a team uh, for 2017 or what's remaining of it, uh, which brings us into 2018, right? And kind of, you know, where are we thinking that we want to spend our time? Uh, what are the areas we want to improve or the new features we want to try and deliver to our customers? Um, and this is just a selection of some of the kind of most important or perhaps the most impactful here. Um, number one, of course, being the cloud native GitLab offering, right? And taking that uh, from the early beta state um, that we're hoping for uh, and, and, uh, delivering it and making it really GA, right, and, and having that be a great experience for our customers um, and really uh, uh, for us, everything that we can, having also production use the same tool set. And so, um, uh, you know, our customers can, can run a .com-like uh, installation of GitLab uh, just using Helm and Kubernetes um, along with perhaps, you know, like a database and things like that as well. So um, that's super exciting. Uh, a lot of engineering work going into that. And... Um, uh, really impactful, I think, a lot of folks uh, as well. Um, next up, though, uh, beyond that is kind of another goal, which is we want to make sure that GitLab is as easy as possible to install and deploy, um, and then uh, also for ongoing maintenance, right? Um, and we're, we're tacking this a couple of areas. We saw this earlier with our deliverables here in 2017, where we're doing some work to ease the configuration of GitLab uh, HA, where we're making it uh, more apparent of what, what's deprecated, right? So we want to try and make sure that we continue to make sure that GitLab is, you know, even easier to use, even easier to install, even easier to maintain, and just continue to drive down our operating costs, um, as well as making sure customers can try it as quickly as possible, as little effort as possible, um, so they can start to see value in their proof of concepts um, uh, more quickly. So to that, to that end, we're kind of focused on a couple of things here. As far as big goals, we have a number of other smaller improvements we're making as well here in the plans. Um, but we're gonna try and make sure we have you know, automated deployments of GitLab onto at least the two major um, providers, right? So AWS and GCP. Um, so the AWS, you probably heard about the quick start, right? And so we want to make sure that we deliver on that here um, and continue to improve it for 2018 um, and make sure that you, know, you can deploy GitLab with, a, 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 again, like a kind of you know, a best practices uh, with simply going through a wizard, entry of information, choosing some options, and hitting go. And it then takes care of the rest. Um, and the same model we're trying to shoot for for GCP as well. Um, so it can help to guide you and doesn't make you go in and set up each individual component um, from networking to instances and things like that yourself. Um, so we can take care of that for you and stitch it all together. Um, and again, reduce a lot of the initial setup costs here for GitLab and make sure that folks are, you know, on the right path as far as architecture as well. So uh, those are two big projects there um, that uh, both for our, you know, for our teams will have initial upfront costs as well as ongoing as, you know, they are using different tool sets, different scripting and things like that. Um, but it does let us, let us leverage the best of both of those tool sets and what they offer to customers as far as features and Aurora, RDS and things like that. Um, next up is we want to make sure um, that more of our customers can easily enable HTTPS, right? So we want to make sure that they can take advantage of that for security reasons, best practices, but also uh, things like the registry really, really want to have SSL turned on. Um, and so, um, you know, for folks to be able to try that, we've got to make sure it's as easy as possible as well. Um, and so we're working with uh, Let's Encrypt, hopefully, so that you can simply um, enable Let's Encrypt, and we'll go ahead and provision certificates automatically for you without you having to worry about going and getting them, putting them in certain locations, and then adding the configuration files. Um, so that's pretty exciting there to make sort of uh, what's, what's right now a little bit more challenging step uh, much easier. Uh, the next one is perhaps really interesting, and this is kind of more of a still to be firmed out, but we want to try and start moving towards a bit more of a kind of web admin type console. Uh, right now we have you know, our, our GitLab RB, which contains a wealth of features. Um, 
And as you kind of mentioned earlier with the roles, some of them interact with each other. And um, it'd be nice if we could have sort of a simplified sort of initial configuration to get the kind of lights on. And then you can then poke and prod um, uh, for more of the kind of feature uh, based uh, settings uh, within uh, the kind of web admin console to do things like configuring SSL or some of the other things that don't you know, necessarily, you know, kind of basic foundational things. So um, that should help make to GitLab much easier to work with, um, as well as hopefully also make it easier to sort of insert a new node, uh, plug in, you know, a, a GeoReplica and things like that as well here. So trying to reduce some of that manual interaction and manual steps required. Um, and the final one also sort of a, a big goal here is we want to, um, to make it easier for our customers to stay up to date on the latest version of GitLab. Um, you know, if you, if you look at some of our data, um, we do have, you know, a, a lot of customers actually who, who do stay up to date. Um, I think around two thirds are within, you know, a, a handful of releases. Um, but we do have a number of folks who sort of maybe forget about updating GitLab. Um, and we want to make sure that we have a good experience for folks and really help them, uh, you know, make sure they stay up to date and leverage the best new features, best experience, um, and so their developers are productive and productive as they can be. And also, of course, to get things like security fixes um, as soon as possible as well. So we're trying to think of ways that we can um, perhaps do this automated uh, in, in some ways at first, maybe some patches or things like that, or maybe um, you know, making the UI a little easier to hit the button to upgrade. Um, so we're trying to think of ways to go through and do this. And you can see and, and join the discussion there as well um, to help uh, uh, increase the number of our customers who are staying on a recent uh, version of GitLab um, and um, again, reducing some of the maintenance overhead of, of managing that process as well. Um, so some key goals there for 2018, I think they are really awesome um, places to spend our effort, um, but uh, we'll open it up for questions now uh, as well for folks who want to comment, uh, ask some questions, uh, maybe share some concerns with, you know, perhaps where we're going or things that we aren't doing. Uh, but, uh, but yeah. No questions? We'll count to three here. Uh, and if uh, there's no questions, we'll wrap it up. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Uh, see you in the team call. And uh, thanks, Martin, for, for uh, as well. Thanks, everyone.